Hello everyone, this is Dan, KG7PAR with ICS Controllers, and today I have a special preview for you of our 8-channel repeater controller that runs on a Raspberry Pi 4. Like our other Pi repeater products, this controller is based around the SVX Link controller software platform. This brings all the great functionality that you've come to expect from our controllers into the high-channel count controller that you've been asking us for for years. We never thought it would be so challenging to get it all to work together but Perseverance has brought the dream into reality. We have gone through four distinct audio codec systems, each with their own unique challenges, to come to the one that finally works the way expected to do. Let's take a quick look around. And of course, keep in mind, this is still a prototype, so please forgive the dings and dents as we look and poke around through the system. This is a one rack unit tall enclosure fitting with a standard 19 inch equipment rack. The case is steel with cross fitting joints, so it's plenty strong, and offers good local noise shielding. As we move across the interface panel, the first thing you'll see is the full color two inch LCD display. This LCD runs on I2C with commands that are easy to implement using a script such as Python. So you can keep just the basic information panel or customize the display with any information about your system you desire. Continuing across the panel, you'll see the first D sub nine connector. This is an eight channel analog to digital converter interface. This is great for hooking up to analog sensors such as fuel monitors, wind gauges, temperature sensors, or whatever else you feel like. There is even an autonomous module for SVX Link specifically for making announcements based on these sensor signals. Just below the ADC, you will also see a D sub 15 connector that provides eight channels of GPIO for connecting up to digital interfaces or sensors. The same SVX Link module can interface with these GPIO signals to make digital announcements as well. Continuing along the bottom of the case, you'll see eight additional D sub nine connectors that correspond to the eight full duplex ports. These ports are fully independent and can be configured as isolated ports, crosslink, set up as a voter, monitor, or however you wish. Duplex, simplex, it's up to you. Next as we move around is a standard ethernet RJ45 connector. This allows quick access to the Raspberry Pi ethernet jack for network connectivity. Keep in mind, the case is a shield, so Bluetooth and Wi-Fi won't work. You can, of course, still use a Wi-Fi adapter if Wi-Fi is required. Additionally, there's a standard power jack that will accept a nominal 12-volt power supply, but this is tolerant to somewhere around 25 volts. The switcher IC will tolerate up to 42 volts, so there's plenty of headroom for safety. The capacitors will be the limiting factor on this connector. Next, as we move counterclockwise, is the GPS receiver connector. This GPS receiver is optimized for time accuracy, so once it gets a fix, it will switch to high accuracy mode and can deliver accuracy to 6 nanoseconds using the pulse per second marker. Talking about the GPS receiver, we're looking at a variant receiver that should give us the ability to also generate a GPS disciplined 10 MHz programmable reference output signal as well. Look for a second SMA connector for this feature if we get it working. The GPS antenna connector provides nominal power at 3.3 volts to also allow you to use a powered GPS receiver antenna. Continuing along, we now get to the Raspberry Pi computer connectors. You'll notice three USB connectors. These are all USB 2.0, although the Raspberry Pi supports a second USB 3 port. The primary USB 3 port is reserved for the audio codec device that you'll see once we get inside the box. Last is the HDMI port connector. This will allow you to hook up an HDMI monitor, TV, or etc. to interact with your controller locally if you don't want to do everything over Ethernet. You will need a keyboard as well to do this. Not shown in this prototype is also a relay board we are planning to include that uses GPIO controlled relays so you can switch currents up to 2 amps. The relays are rated for AC power as well as DC power. Great for controlling like cabinet fans. That's a quick tour of the outside of the cabinet. Now let's take a quick look on the inside of it. First, there are two screws that hold the lid on in the back. We've already removed these to keep it easier to show. Just gently pry open the back edge to get the lid off. You will note how the seams are interwoven to maximize the rigidity of the case. Now that we have the lid off, let's have a look at the basic internal architecture. In the back, you'll see the Raspberry Pi 4 and the sound card mounted on top. In the front are a number of items of interest you'll see there are eight daughter boards installed. This is for the full eight channel version of the controller. 
if you go with four channel version, there will be four boards, six channel, six boards, etc. There are two designs of boards here. First is the GPIO interface adapter board. Second is a stereo audio board that provides a pair of audio channels for the controller. The raw GPIO from the radios come in through the connector and passes directly into the GPIO board for conversion to three volt logic that the rest of the system uses. This board handles all the GPIO for two full ports. On the second side of the board, which is hidden, are four switches. One pair of CTCSS and one pair of COS polarity switches, one each per channel, with two channels per interface board. The idea with doing the baseboard and modular design with these daughter boards are to enable a few key concepts that we feel are important. One, serviceability. Two, expandability. And three, customization. Presume you work with radios that are finicky. You can keep a spare interface board on hand, ready to drop in should something go wrong. Maybe you have a setup that isn't compatible with traditional logic signaling. You can just design your own interface adapter and drop it in. Maybe all you need is a four port system to begin with, but now your club has decided it needs to add another system. Just drop in another pair of boards and you're ready to configure the system and away you go. It takes about 15 minutes. Once you have the main system set up, you can quickly and cheaply add additional channels up to the maximum of eight, done in sets of two. Each audio channel has multi-turn adjustment potentiometers on the input and the output audio path, along with a flat audio filter that can be activated with a slider switch located just behind the audio daughter boards. The power supply region of the board is composed of a pair of switchers, one that takes the 12 volt power supply down to five volts, and one that takes the five volts down to three volts. There are several fuses along the way to help with staged power on during fault isolation should it ever be needed. Running on the 12 volt supply, the entire system runs on approximately half an amp of current. Let's take a look at the system operating in real time. First, the LCD basic information display. The default behavior for this display is to provide the IP address of the system along with the real-time status for each radio port, specifically the carrier operated switch, COS, also known as squelch, and the push to talk signals, so you can monitor what the software is seeing or sending as applicable. This particular system is currently set up with port one as a full duplex repeater with the remaining ports set up as simplex transmitters. When I trigger the port one COS, you will see the squelch signal turn on for port one and the port 1 push to talk signal, as well as the port 2 through 8 push to talk simplex signals. When I release the COS signal on port 1, you will see the squelch on port 1 clear, as well as the port 1 through 8 push to talk signals clear once the transmission, including hang times, has been completed. Kilo Golf 7 Papa Alpha Romeo Repeater. The time is 3.39 a.m. Press 0, number sign for help. As you heard, the port 1 call sign is set up as KG7PAR. Each additional port can share the same call sign or have a unique call sign as you need. In addition to unique call signs, each port can run a different mix of expansion modules that are customized to their specific needs. Everything is customizable in software if you're willing to invest the time and energy to understand the mechanics of the SVX Link software, which uses TCL scripts to control the user facing experience. If you can script it, then it can be realized. Now, what about the open repeater user interface? Well, being this is such a vastly more complicated piece of hardware in terms of number of channels, configurations, linking, etc. The current version, 2.1.2 at the time of this video, is not really up to the task just yet, but we are working with the Open Repeater team to bring the basic features into the user interface. In addition, we are looking to add some new options for dropping in customized code to better allow you to control the system as you desire. This will begin appearing with the introduction of the Open Repeater version 3.0 software, which does not yet have an anticipated release date. Well, that's our quick tour of the newest Pi Repeater 8X system. 
We are still working on the design, but all the high risk hurdles are completed now. I'm just making some fine tuning adjustments, adjusting connector placements, and evaluating the newest GPS chipset. We're hoping to get this product into a small market for field evaluations in the near future. Let us know if you're interested in getting additional information by reaching out to us through the website at www.ics-ctrl.com. Thank you for watching. Kilo Golf 7 Papa Alpha Romeo Repeater. The time is 3.39 a.m. Press 0, number sign for help. Mm -hmm.